Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, verses 24 through 37. Listen, hear, and receive God's word for us. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. About that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves or his servants in charge, each with his own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all is keep awake. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Commentator Don Wilhelm describes the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark writing, it is not for the faint of heart. There are enough end time catastrophes, global disasters, public trials, familial be betrayals, warnings of persecution, and darkened heavens to make even the sturdiest soul quiver." End of quote. The 13th chapter of Mark is known in theological circles as the Little Apocalypse, and it serves as a bridge between Jesus' teaching on the Temple Mount and his passion narratives in chapter 14 through 16. In the beginning verses of this chapter, which I did not read, Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. And as he and his four disciples ascend to the Mount of Olives, he begins to teach about the signs that will denote the end of age, stating, many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdoms. There will be, a, be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs, Jesus said. And then he continues by warning the disciples that they will not be exempt. They will be handed over to councils beaten in the synagogues. They will stand before governors and kings and be brought to trial. Jesus further warns that siblings will turn against siblings, parents against their children and children against their parents. People will be hated all because of his name. And then Jesus also assures that those who endure to the end, they will be saved. And he warns that false prophets will appear, declaring that the Messiah has come and producing signs and omens to lead the elect astray. But Jesus says, stay woke, for he has already told them and us all the things that we need to know. This lectionary gospel passage this, for this first Sunday in Advent declares that after the suffering of humanity, creation will also display signs and symbols that the Son of Man is coming to claim his own. The sun will darken, the moon will not give light, stars will fall 
from heaven and powers in heaven will be shaken. Now we are all witnesses to and confirm that for all of eternity there have been wars and rumors of wars. This very moment wars are being waged all over the world. Siblings are killing siblings in Israel, Palestine, Darfur, Sudan, Ukraine, China, and many other countries. And in every city in the United States, including right here in Pittsburgh, siblings are killing siblings. We are witnesses and we also contribute to and are complicit in the destruction of God's natural creation with our overconsumption, our waste, and our carelessness. In addition to the fact that natural disasters occur, you know, hurricanes and fires and floods and earthquakes and extreme temperatures, all of which Jesus foretold. If we apply Jesus' prophecy to all that we witness and all that we are complicit in today, we could very well expect that Jesus' return is imminent. However, Jesus has made it clear that no one knows the day or the hour in which he will return. And this is the first day, the first Sunday in Advent, and we have lit a candle of hope. And yet everything that is in this lectionary passage declaring that Jesus is coming again seems ominous. It's out of sequence. It's incongruous with all that we hope for. Martin Copenhagen writes, those who lived before the birth of Jesus did not know the day or the hour of his arrival. So they needed to live in a continual state of watchfulness. The birth of a Messiah could only be celebrated as a surprise party that could take place on any day at any moment. By anticipating the return of the Son of Man here at the beginning of Advent, Copenhagen continues, we wait in the same way those who lived before Jesus was born waited, not knowing the day or the hour when the Messiah would appear. We also join them in hearing and needing the same exhortation to be watchful and to keep awake." End of quote. Now, unlike those who were waiting for the birth of the Messiah, we know for whom we are waiting. We know when they will be born. We have the date circled on our calendars. Some of you may have Advent calendars that you open every day and pull out a piece of candy or something else. We are reminded in television ads on news broadcasts, the internet, and even on the doors of retail establishments, the number of shopping days that are left before Christmas. And for many of us, Advent really isn't a season of waiting. It is a season of consumerism, overconsumption, overspending, and lack of rest. By the time the four weeks of Advent concludes, we are completely exhausted. We have lost sight of the real reason for the season. We have fallen asleep to the meaning of Christmas, God's love incarnate and coming to dwell with and be present with us. We are anything but woke. Jesus tells his disciples that waiting is not a passive exercise. For he states, beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey and he leaves his home and puts others in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Jesus says, therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And then Jesus goes on and says, one more time, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Jesus said that over and over and over again in this passage. That means it was really important that we keep awake. Now, there's a tremendous difference in waiting for Christmas, rushing around shopping malls or on the Internet, spending copious amounts of money, attending parties and eating lots of food, celebrating everything but the birth of Jesus and waiting for the birth of the Christ child. 
On this Sunday in Advent, we still have time to wake up from the rushing around and exhausting hustle of Christmas and to take time to encounter the presence of Christ, who has, by the way, already come into our lives. Much like the fig tree that recognizes the season of summer is upon it when its branches grow tender and its leaves begin to spring forth, waiting for Christ is a time of preparation and contemplation. Waiting for Christ is a time to actively live as Jesus taught us, to live faithfully, sacrificially, productively, that we might bear much and good fruit. It is a time to live lovingly. Waiting for Christ is a time to stay woke to the needs of others around us, a time to serve those who are living on the margins, to provide for those who don't have the necessities in life, to share the love of Christ with everyone we encounter with a warm smile, a cheerful greeting of hello, or a God bless you. That won't cost you a thing. Waiting for Christ is a time to stay woke and to contemplate how we are walking in the world. Are we living as Christ taught us to live? Are we forgiving, kind, gracious, merciful, and loving? Or are we constantly looking to find fault, shortcomings, and blame others? Are we projecting our own inadequacies and insecurities, our own disappointments and desires onto others? It's, if so, it's time to work that stuff out, y'all. Amen? <sighs> work it out in fear and trembling. Waiting for Christ is a time to stay woke to how the Spirit of God is moving in this world and to stop focusing on what was and will never be again. It is a time to catch the vision of what God is doing in this season. The prophets have said it over and over and over and over and over again in the Old Testament, and Pastor BJ and Pastor Heather and I have said it over and over and over again in this past year and a half. God is doing a new thing. Are we so caught up in what was that we have fallen asleep to and are we squandering the time that we have to prepare to receive what God is doing right now and what God will do in days, months, and years to come? That's something for you to ponder this Advent season. Waiting for Christ is a time to stay woke to the fact that even though we know that Christmas will come on December 25th, the Christ child, Emmanuel, God incarnate, is with us now. He has already come and is coming again. And yet no one knows when, where, or how. That's why we are reminded to stay woke. Staying woke to the move of God in this season of our individual and corporate lives is, is an imperative, and it is counterintuitive. Staying woke when done in the Spirit is not exhausting or overwhelming. It is liberating and reconciling and invigorating. And when we stay woke in the Spirit, we can rest in God and know that everything is going to be okay because God is in control. We are not. And when we do that, we will be prepared to receive all that God is doing and all that God will do on our behalf. So stay woke, people of God. Stay woke, people of God. Stay woke, people of God. The Christ child is coming. Amen.